Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome back. I decided to make a couple of different videos, so we're gonna, I'm gonna try to do this in segments, but for now, I'm gonna try to make sure that each video contains all the uh, necessary information relating to that video. A lot of times people reach out to me and they ask me about what we sell or how to make things that sell. And the short answer is I really can't tell you exactly what to do. You can go look to see what's out in the market, but the truth is even the product that I'm gonna show you here now today in this video, it isn't something that could be a long-term success. And the reason for that is that as soon as we release it as a company and it's profitable, other companies will duplicate it and then they'll outsource it to Taiwan or to China. And that's just, that's just the reality. So I'm not bitter, I'm just telling you the truth. So we're gonna get one go at this. We're gonna make one batch of parts and then everybody's gonna be in the market competing against us. So that's just the way it is. So now that you know that, let me show you what we're gonna do. We have this tool buggy over here. And what happens is, you guys don't gotta zoom in, but right here you see this blue part. These, these linkages, they connect to this center part, this blue. Well, when you buy it, it actually looks like this. Down here on this, this, this fixture, this is just a little piece of like fiberglass or, or carbon fiber with some inserts in here. And you notice that it's flat. Well, one of my team drivers reached out and he said, hey, could you make one that's a little bit thicker? And so right here on Fusion 360, you can see that we have a couple of different iterations drawn up. So here's one iteration. I'll do a top view for you guys. There's one iteration and here's another one. And you can see that this one has a little bit more material down here around the edge, but it has this fillet. So what we did is we drew it up and then to make sure that it fit, we 3D printed one on our just inexpensive Prusa printer, just like an Ender 3 or anything else. You don't need anything fancy. Once we have something that fits mechanically, now you have to start, now it's decision time. How are you going to make this? Are you gonna make one? Are you gonna make five? Are you gonna tool up to make 500? Like, which material are you gonna use? You're gonna use aluminum, you're gonna use steel, you're gonna use titanium. I did order a small bar of titanium from McMaster Car, and just uh, for the record, to whatever today is, the price of the material was one inch, a quarter inch thick, one inch wide. I wanna say it was six inches long. I think it was 98 bucks. I think that's what I paid. Maybe I bought a foot for 98 bucks. I think it was six inches though. Pretty expensive. The aluminum on the other hand is incredibly cheap. So what I did is I grabbed some scraps that I had floating around and I threw them in our little, our little VM2 here and I decked them off. But since I've already got other work on this machine, most of the time for projects like this, I use the X7. I'm gonna show you this. If I were gonna make lots and lots of these, you guys know this is a Pearson pallet. I don't know if you guys can see or not. It's a, it's, it's a part of a pallet system for, for fast work holding. If I were really serious about making lots of these, I would probably line them up so that I could make a whole bunch. Maybe half of the pallet for side one, the other half for side two. That way we made a lot of parts every time we actually hit cycle start. But I'm not making lots of these. We're gonna make one and see if we're happy with it. And when I wanna make one, these are thin, these are, not, these are not the easiest part to hold on to. And so my go-to method of work holding is generally just using good old fashioned screws. So come on over to the X7 and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Well, let's make a detour. Right here you'll see, I've got some parallels right here and I have this kind of mocked up and you see this is a relatively thin piece of aluminum sitting here. And just so you know, this setup right here, absolutely will 100% work for side one. I could go in here, I could do all of the 2D adaptive, the 2D contour, all the drilling, all the tapping. These two holes up here at the front and this far outside hole, these are all M3 tapped holes. These holes and these holes here on the inner, inner perimeter, those are all clearance holes. Those are all through holes that are just three millimeter. Okay, so before we head into the X7, let's take a, a quick uh, account I've showed you the application on the car itself. I've shown you the original part. I've shown you a couple of different drawings inside Fusion 360. And I've shared a couple of different of the 3D prints that we did right on our little Prusa. Now I wanna show, I, I did show you guys down here on the vice jaws, how we could rough out side one, which is the top side. And now I wanna show you guys how you might finish this 
on a fixture inside the X7. So before I get to before I get ahead of myself, this is just a little two millimeter tip that can go on like a little hand wrench, or you could even control it with like a a little crescent wrench or something like that. But over here, what I would do, you see, I've already got the outline. And see how it's hanging off here? This is kind of like a Polk workbench where you can get to the bottom. I love applications where I can fasten something from the bottom. So I would try to keep this bar as thick as I could. And what I would do is I would cut a little pocket where these bosses are. I would cut a pocket that matches these bosses. And since these holes at, since these two holes and these outer holes are all tapped, what I would do is I would drill through this and then I would use a fastener right through the bottom. And I would hold it tight and I would clean it off. And if you just wanted to make a few of these parts, if you just wanted to make a few of them, this is a super clean, super easy way to do it. Now, if you're wondering, Jay, why would you use such a thick bar? Why wouldn't you make the bar thinner? Well, you could go to say, like if you see in my hand, I've got a couple different screws here. Obviously this one was too long. We could go to a, a, a shorter one and we could actually make the fixture even thinner. And, but as we thin the bottom side of that fixture, cutting it for clearance, it's gonna get more and more flimsy. And so I try to use the longest, most robust fastener that I can for the application. I try to use as many of them and it's, these are not, these don't need to be like super high precision, but at the end of the day, you want something that looks and performs good. And what I've shown you guys here today is kind of the first steps. It's you identify the need for some type of a product. You draw it up, you rapid prototype it either out of metal or in our case using 3D printers. We tested the fit to make sure that everything was good on the car. You then program it and kind of do some work planning for the work holding. And then you build fixtures and cut the parts. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. As always, I hope you laughed. I hope you learned something. I hope this benefits you. And we will absolutely see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.